Welcome back to the Kim 111 Lab video series. Today we are doing experiment 12, calorimetry, enthalpy neutralization of reactions. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to wear your proper protective equipment. There's nothing new for our safety check today. Be sure to have your closed-toed shoes, long baggy pants, lab coat, and glasses. Gloves are only recommended today when handling the acidic and basic solutions. Today you'll carry out a calorimetry experiment to determine the enthalpy or heat of your reaction. You'll use a calorimeter to do this, and every calorimeter has a different heat capacity, so you'll gain experience in figuring that out as well. Your goal for today is to figure out the heat of reaction for two acid-base reactions. First the reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, and then for sodium hydroxide and acetic acid. You'll determine these heats of reaction by the use of a calorimeter to monitor their change in temperature. This directly correlates to the heat of the reaction. For accurate measurements, you need to first determine the heat capacity for your calorimeter, then you'll carry out both acid-base reactions sequentially. To determine the heats of reaction, you'll need to plot or graph your data to then perform some necessary calculations. To accurately measure how much heat is released or absorbed by our acid-base reactions today, their heats of reaction, we first have to find out how much heat is lost to our calorimeter. This is the heat capacity of your calorimeter. No system is perfect, thus we have to account for the loss of heat. To figure out the heat capacity, you'll simply add some hot water to a sample of cold water in your calorimeter. The difference between the initial and final temperatures is related to the heat capacity since some of the heat from the hot water will be lost to the coffee mug. So you first have to bring 50 ml of DI water to room temperature in your mug. This will take about 10 minutes. While your water is equilibrating, you need to obtain some hot water. So measure out another 50 ml sample of DI water and heat it on a plate until it reaches between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius. Once your hot water is reached between 60 and 70 degrees, quickly write down its temperature. Then move your thermometer to your cold water in the calorimeter and write down its temperature. Finally, add the hot water all at once to your calorimeter. Cover it, swirl it to mix the samples, then record the temperature every 15 seconds for 3 minutes. Be sure to dump out and dry your calorimeter between each data collection today. All solutions can go down the drain. After graphing your data, you'll be able to determine the heat capacity of your calorimeter. So now you're ready to determine the enthalpy or heat of an acid-base reaction. You'll first do this with a reaction between the strong electrolytes, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. To measure the heat of this reaction, all you need to do is mix the two solutions in your calorimeter and monitor their heat by taking the temperature. You first need to obtain 50 ml of NaOH. Don't measure from the carboy directly because this will hold up the line behind you. Instead, just add approximately 50 ml to your beaker and then carefully measure out the correct amount in your graduated cylinder. Then just add your NaOH to your calorimeter. You don't want your acid and base solutions to mix outside of the calorimeter, so be sure to rinse and dry your graduated cylinder after you use it every time. Now you need your acid, so again, obtain approximately 50 ml of HCl from the carboy into a beaker and then carefully measure out the correct amount. Next, you need to get your acid and base to the same temperature. Just be patient and be sure to wipe off your thermometer between solutions. Once your solutions are at the same temperature, write it down as your time zero temperature. Now, just like before, quickly add your acid all at once to your calorimeter. Cover, swirl, and record the temperature every 15 seconds for 3 minutes. Now that you've gotten practice obtaining the heat of reaction from a strong acid-base reaction, how about a weak acid plus a strong base reaction? 
You'll simply repeat the procedure again, this time with NaOH in the calorimeter and acetic acid in your graduated cylinder. Again, to measure the heat of this reaction, all you'll need to do is mix the two solutions in your calorimeter and monitor their heat by taking the temperature. Just like before, add 50 milliliters of NaOH to your calorimeter, rinse your grad cylinder, then measure out 50 milliliters of acetic acid. Let the two solutions come to the same temperature, then add the acetic acid to your calorimeter, cover, swirl, and record the temperature every 15 seconds for three minutes. After collecting all of your data, you'll need to graph it in order to find some important numbers for your calculations. All of your time temperature graphs must have some very important features. Fill the entire provided graphing space. An informative graph title as well as axis titles with units, cleanly plotted points with a connecting line, and clear labels of TI, TF, and delta T. To get started with graphing, you'll need to first figure out the appropriate intervals of your axis so that your graph takes up the entire area. Our data has a maximum of 29.3 and a minimum of 23.2 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 180 seconds. So then using the provided graph paper, we have labeled our axis to maximize the space available. Next, we need to plot the data points. You also need to add a line that connects your data points. This will help you see the relevant temperatures you need for your calculations. Next, you definitely need to add a graph title. Y versus X is most appropriate, and then you need to label your axis. Now be sure to label the initial and final temperatures of your calorimeter's contents, TI and TF. TI is the temperature of your solution in your calorimeter before you added anything to it. TF is the temperature at which your data plateaus. And finally, you must also label your change in temperature, or delta T. This is just the difference between your final and initial temperatures. With your initial, final, and change in temperatures on your beautiful graphs, you can calculate the heat capacity of your calorimeter as well as your heats or enthalpies of reaction. Now get to those calculations.